Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, one of all praises, glory and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Dash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutation, much love and respect to you. I came out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Now, uh, this lesson is going to be something based on something that I read in Romans. And um, I wanted to expound on it. And it's dealing with the, the spirit talking. Okay, the spirit um, speaking, even though the words that we say might not be describing the things that we're feeling in the spirit. The spirit itself bear witness, okay, as the scriptures say, um, because the spirit is something that, that the flesh sometimes cannot comprehend, all right? Now, this is Romans 26, Romans 8 and 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. You know, so it's, it's the, the, the things that the spirit is saying to the heavenly father is undescribable in words for us. Okay. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. All right. So the spirit itself is actually crying out to the Heavenly Father. That's why it says in, um, in Ezekiel 9 and 4, it says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Does that mean that brothers are necessarily actually s uh, crying and sighing because of when they think about the abominations? Certain certain brothers that happens from time to time, or that happened that happened at one point in time. But brothers is not just crying on a ra you know randomly like that. But you know what I mean. And, and there might be brothers that actually are like that. But even if the brothers are not doing that, guess what? The spirit is crying and sighing for the abominations that be done in the midst. And we're speaking about the abominations and we're complaining about the abominations. But also our spirit is actually sighing and it's crying. Okay? And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the midst of the city and smite let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Okay, so the Heavenly Father is going to seal the right, the men that are, that are right in the spirit. Now I want to look at this word groanings. Okay, in Romans 8 and 26. Greek word is stenagmos, stenagmos, and it says a groaning, a sigh, you know, and it's not a sigh of relief, it's a sigh of, of uh, frustration, okay, you know, and that's all it really says on it, doesn't really say much, if we go to the root word, uh, is stenadzo, which is to groan, sigh with grief, you know, so it's the negative sense of groaning, to grudge, you know, to murmur, pray inaudibly, you know, in straits, grief, groan, grudge, sigh, so it's the negative sense of groaning and, and things like that, you know, because what, you're, you're, fu you're frustrated, in this flesh, in this world, it would, with all the wickedness going on. Even when we die, you know, our spirit is actually speaking, you know. Let's get that in Genesis, the fourth chapter. In the ninth verse, it says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is thy brother Abel? Uh, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. 
Now, when it says the voice of his, his blood is speaking about his spirit, is crying unto to the heavenly Father. All right? And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And we already see Esau's a fugitive and a vagabond, man. All right? He's a fugitive from justice. You know, he doesn't want to pay for his, his wickedness. But when it says the blood crieth unto me, it's speaking about the spirit. Blood doesn't cry. Blood doesn't say anything. It's the spirit that was crying unto the heavenly father. All right? Even when we're, we're, we're like the brothers that might be beheaded for the witness of the heavenly father, any brother that was killed, uh, you know, um, while being in Yahawashai, he will um, be speaking to the heavenly father. You know, be complaining to Heavenly Father, and, and the Heavenly Father is going to, to act upon that. You know, he's just long suffering. That's why he hasn't acted yet. And that's why these, these Edomites and these wicked Israelites think they've got away with the things that they've done, but they, they, they really, there's no getting away from the Heavenly Father. This is Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. It says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the, 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 right, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow because he feareth not the Most High. All right. You see? So the heavenly Father is not going to forsake the righteous. Well, what well, did not King David said? One of one of the best, one of my favorite scriptures. All right, Psalms thirty-seven. Let's get it. He's not going to forsake the righteous, and you are not going to go. And the wicked shall not go unpunished. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. So it doesn't matter what you uh, you know what you think you got away with. The spirits of the righteous are con complaining to the heavenly Father, are are bearing witness against you. In the in the um, in the uh, in the spirit world, you see. Oh, I can start at twelve. It says, "This is uh, Psalms thirty-seven and twelve. It says, "The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Your day is coming, man. <laughs> All right." There's no, there's no way that you're going to be able to, um, to escape the day of judgment because the heavenly Father is, um, is the one that's, 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 that's waiting to, um, to, uh, to, to execute that judgment, and He hears the prayers of the righteous. It's well, the scriptures also say that the prayer of the righteous um, availeth much. Okay, so when a righteous man prayeth, that's a, that's a very meaningful thing okay it's very meaningful now hold on here let me get um let me get baruch 3 in verse 1 it says O lord almighty power of israel the soul in anguish the troubled spirit crieth unto thee hear O lord and have mercy for thou art merciful and have pity upon us. You know, because what? The, the, the spirit, the soul is in anguish. The troubled spirit crieth unto him. So he hears it and he, he's getting ready to act. And he's not, he's not happy with what he's hearing. All right. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy. For thou art merciful and have pity upon us. Because we have sinned before thee. And the scriptures say that. Um, that the Lord is very pitiful and, and merciful, man, to who? The, the righteous. Okay, not to Esau. He's not merciful to the, to the wicked. He's merciful to the righteous. And he's hearing the cries. He's hearing the groanings. He knows what, you, what, you're, what you're crying for in your spirit. That's why also it says in the kingdom that we're going to get what we, what we desire before we even ask of it. You know? The Heavenly Father knows us better than we know ourselves. Okay, that's just a fact. You know, he knows the exact numbers of hairs on our head. So why would we worry 
about, you know, anything of this life because he's the one that, that controls everything, man. You know? And I know that demon pops on us sometimes, but we got to rebuke that demon and bring up scriptures in our mind. All right. So anyways, with that, hopefully uh, that was edifying. Um, I want to give all praises going on to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai again. And double honors to the apostles and elders and much love to you. I came out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Shalom.